My sponsor, Rock Bottom, is currently running a special deal. Head on over to rockbottomcoins.com and use code ZERK at checkout for a 30% off your order. The whole thing wobbing. What's going on guys? It's Zerks coming at you today with another YouTube video and today they released the Madden 20 database so I figured why not make a couple of special videos. So first off I'm going to be going over the top 10 most underrated players in Madden 20. And my god, Twitter is definitely exploding with this database being released. So if you guys have any people you think are also underrated, make sure you guys comment them below. And my next video I want to do is going to be the top 10 most overrated players in Madden 20. So please comment down below some players you think that are too highly rated, some overrated guys. And uh, I gotta say... Yeah, people are not too happy about these ratings, that is definitely for sure. With that being said though, I hope you guys do enjoy the video, and of course, make sure you guys hit that sub button and turn that notification bell on, because we're out to getting a ton of Madden 20 Ultimate Team information. With that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into this, and let's start off. I want to say this right now, this top 10 list is not going to be in any particular order, just basically the top 10 players that I think should be rated higher. And starting off, we're going to use Eric Ebron as the perfect example. So Eric Ebron had 13 touchdowns. This man was tied for second in the NFL for touchdowns, and he comes in with 86 overall. Funny enough, Eric Ebron actually saw this himself over on Twitter, and he was not too happy about this. Also... Demarcus Lawrence saw his rating and he was not happy about it either. So it looks like these NFL players are really upset about their ratings. And Eric Ebron, understandably so, 86 overall uh, with 13 touchdowns. That's terrible. Not to mention where he's actually ranked in terms of tight ends. Take a look at where Eric Ebron is actually ranked. So we have Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, Delaney Walker, Kittle, Greg Olson, Tyler Eifert, Jordan Reed, Trey Burton, Jared Cook, then Eric Ebron. He is ranked as the 10th tight end that is terrible to have people such as trey burton jared cook okay cook had a good season but trey burton does not deserve to be above eric ebron at all tyler reifert as well was injured greg olsen got injured delaney walker what the heck are you doing at 92 overall i'll never understand that but eric ebron 86 overall that is terribly disrespectful and that one is just that's really bad and while we're on the topics of tight ends, let's just go ahead and throw Kittle in here as well. George Kittle, 90 overall. Yes, I know 90 overall is definitely very solid, but in my opinion, Kittle is a top two tight end. It's between him and Travis Kelsey. I don't think it's close. Zach Ertz, well, yes, you can put him there. Top three tight ends, whatever. Kittle isn't even ranked as a top three tight end. That is absolutely mind-boggling to me that the man who broke the record for most receiving yards in a single season by a tight end and he did it with three separate qbs is only a 90 overall it makes zero sense to me and once again take a look back at the ratings you can see here he's ranked as the fourth highest tight end i have no idea how why he is not at least a 93 overall at the worst case scenario he should be tied with Zach Ertz at a 93. There is no way he should be that below them and below Delaney Walker. And my God. Okay, I'll say that right now. He's going on my most overrated players list because I don't understand Delaney Walker's 92. I literally just do not. Kittle, 90 overall. That is absolutely terrible. So I'm honestly really hoping they come out and say that they accidentally put him in as an 83 because this is just awful. Xavier Howard coming in 83. In case you didn't know. This man was tied for first in the NFL. It was a three-way tie with seven interceptions, which, of course, led the league. And he was an all-pro second-team cornerback. Now, if you're an all-pro cornerback, right, and you lead the league in interceptions, and you just got a massive contract, you're probably pretty good. You're probably one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. So where do you think an 83 overall ranked Xavier Howard in terms of corners? Let's take a look, shall we? So number one is Jalen Ramsey, followed up by Stephon Gilmore, Richard Sherman at number three, Pat Pete four, and Byron Jones at number five. By the way, big big ups on that Byron Jones pick. Then we have Chris Harris Jr., Kyle Fuller, Casey Hayward, Darius Slay, and AJ Boye. That is the top 10 cornerbacks, right? So you're saying an all pro isn't a top 10 corner and isn't even an 88 overall. 
So let's go down and see where this man is actually at. So next up, we have Desmond Trufant and Denzel Ward. Kendall Fuller, Marshawn Lattimore, Akeem Tlaib, Desmond King, Kareem Jackson, it keeps going. We also have Xavier, or Xavier Rhodes, uh, Marlon Humphrey, 85, Jason McCordy, 85, Tredavious White, Nickel, Roby Coleman, Joe Hayden, William Jackson, Jimmy Smith, and then it literally has to load. That's how low he is. Jair Alexander, and then finally down here, we have Xavier Howard. I don't even know what his rank is, but I know for a fact that's not even top 20. So for an all-pro cornerback to be rated the same as a Dory Jackson, Jair Alexander, that is awful. That is absolutely disrespectful. I, I'm seriously hoping that they accidentally put him in as an 83, and they meant to put him as like a 93 and put him up here with Sherman because that's just bad. And next up is going to be Taysom Hill. This man is a 56 overall. Now I'll say this. I don't think Taysom Hill deserves to be even like a 70 probably, but to be a 56 overall, that basically means you never see the field and you are absolutely terrible. Taysom Hill comes in quite a bit and tries to throw the ball for Drew Brees. I know he had an interception this year and I think he had like 80 yards or something like that, but he's also, you know, he's a cake returner. He's a receiver. He's a running back. He basically does it all. I feel as though 56 overall is just kind of disrespectful to Taysom Hill, although I don't think he should be much higher. I think a 56 is pretty bad for Taysom. Now this next one to me is definitely pretty incredible. Derwin James has an 86 overall. Wow, that's crazy. Derwin James was in all pro safety as a rookie. Now not only that, he was all pro first team as a safety and he was all pro second team defensive back. So Derwin James is pretty dang insane if you didn't notice here. 86 overall for Derwin is 100% disrespectful, and it's even more disrespectful when you take a look at who is actually in front of the All-Pro safety as a rookie, Derwin James. This man plays literally everywhere on the field. Tyron Matthews ahead of him. In my opinion, right, I absolutely love Tyron Matthew. If you guys know me, he's literally my favorite player that is not a Cowboy. He is not better than Derwin James. Adrian Amos, he is not better than Derwin James. Keanu Neal, he is definitely not better than Derwin James. Jamal Adams, Malcolm Jenkins, Harrison Smith. Okay, fine. You have a say in those. But Derwin James is definitely uh, way more deserving than 86 overall. In my opinion, you should be close to an 89 or a 90. I understand he was a rookie. They tend to not really rate rookies that high, obviously, after the first year. But my God, 86? Feels as though it's just become like a yearly reoccurring thing. For EA to disrespect Chandler Jones. I never will understand it. I don't know why. This man had 13 sacks, and he only has an 82 overall. Even the year this man led the league in sacks, I don't even believe he was the highest rated outside, right outside linebacker or defensive end, whichever one he was currently at the time. This year, he's only an 82 overall right outside linebacker. He was tied for eighth in sacks in the NFL. Let's take a look at the people in front of him. As you guys can see, there is a pretty big drop off when it comes to the right outside linebackers in general. In terms of pass rushers, there's only one pass rusher actually ahead of him at outside linebacker, and that's gonna be Jadavion Clowney who comes in with a 92 overall. But do you really think Lorenzo Alexander, Dante Hightower, and Demario Davis are better than Chandler Jones, who was tied for eighth in the NFL in sacks? To me, it just doesn't make sense as to why they continue to just destroy this man, rip him apart. He should probably be an 87, 88 overall minimum, in my opinion. He's definitely a beast. Matty Ice. This man low-key, no one even realized it, but he kind of had an MVP quality season again, and no one was ever talking about it. Matt Ryan had 35 touchdowns with 7 interceptions and was 3rd in the NFL for passing yards. Matt Ryan had a very, very, very good season again, and yet no one seems to really care about it just because we had Patrick Mahomes out here throwing 50 touchdowns and Drew Brees, who was doing very well as well, uh, but Matt Ryan really did have a great season. So an 89 overall for Matt Ryan to me is definitely very low, and if we take a look at where he's ranked amongst other QBs, I mean, you can make a case that he should be moved up in general. I mean, 35 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. I know Aaron Rodgers had a crazy good season as well. Uh, Russell Wilson, I think that a lot of people over on Twitter are saying that Matt Ryan should probably be 
above Phillip Rivers, and Phillip Rivers is a little bit too high, uh, I think that Matt Ryan should probably be like a 92. I could see him in that Andrew Luck, Drew Brees type category right there, and Phillip Rivers to me is definitely pretty high at a 94 overall, and this is coming from someone that usually would put Rivers on a list like this of players that are most underrated. I think that Phillip Rivers is probably one of the most underrated players in the NFL. I don't think he's the third best QB. And speaking of Aaron Rodgers, a 90 overall for one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history is pretty crazy as well. This man had 4,440 yards, I believe, 4,442, something like that. He was sixth in the NFL for passing yards with 25 TDs, only two interceptions. That's an insane ratio. Now, I feel as though he was a little bit more cautious with the ball, but with that being said, he still was sixth in passing. So he definitely was still chugging it deep and chugging it up. Aaron Rodgers as a 90 overall to me is pretty crazy. Again, take a look at where he's ranked amongst QBs. Yeah, Russell Wilson ahead of him, Andrew Luck, Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. Again, uh, usually you're used to seeing Aaron Rodgers way higher. Even last year in Madden 19, Rodgers was a 99 to start the year. And then he's sixth in the league in passing yards with 25 TDs and two interceptions. And he drops from a 99 down to a 90. Don't really understand it, but Aaron Rodgers is definitely underrated. Next up is going to be a Cowboys player. Now, this isn't necessarily me being biased because literally everybody over on Twitter is flipping out about this as well. Leighton Van Der Esch, 86 overall. You're telling me that as a rookie, to be third in the NFL in tackles is only deserving of an 86 overall. That doesn't make sense to me at all. Not to mention the fact that Sean Lee barely played, right? And when he did, he was by far worse than Leighton Van Der Esch. Sean Lee, I believe, was an 84. So very, very closely ranked to Leighton Van Der Esch as well. As you guys can see here, 86 overall right outside linebacker. Now, I know that is third ranked when it comes to right outside linebackers, but in general, the right outside linebacker list is very, very low. I don't see how you are third in the NFL in tackles and not at least a 90. To me, you deserve to be at least a 90 overall, if not way higher. Jadavion Clowney is a 92. He was not third in the NFL in sacks, okay? So I don't understand how Leighton's below him. Telvin Smith, you could potentially say Leighton should be underneath him, but those two in general should probably be ranked higher. And finally, Darius Leonard. This one actually could potentially be my number one most underrated, honestly. Darius Leonard led the league in tackles. Not only that, he won Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's actually ranked below Leighton Van Der Esch, which in my opinion, just if you're talking statistically speaking here, Leonard should be ranked higher than Leighton Van Der Esch, and Leighton's an 86, which is still too low, but Darius Leonard's an 84, which is even lower. I think both of them deserve to be in the 90s. Darius Leonard, especially after leading the league in tackles, and again, taking a look at the left outside linebackers, there's a huge drop-off be between Khalil Mack and Von Miller and then everybody else, but to have Sean Lee and Darius Leonard and Cameron Wake all ranked the same... That is just so insane to me, and I don't, I, I, it just doesn't make sense at all how Darius Leonard is only an 84. With that being said, though, those are my top 10 most underrated players in Madden 20. Comment down below what other players you think are extremely underrated, and also what players do you think are overrated. I'll be making that video for you guys later today. I hope you did enjoy the video, and if you did, smack the like button, subscribe, and comment. Of course, make sure you guys turn that notification bell on because we are going to be getting a ton of Madden 20 news, Madden 20 ultimate team news should be flying out very very shortly hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next time